Hey y'all, it's your girl Nadia. And it's me, Coach T. And we are Two Average People. Yes, we are. Well, the first thing you should notice is we're sitting in opposite places. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Switch. I, I just noticed that, y'all, so I have to throw that in there. But the second thing I want to tell you guys is we are here, here in Arizona. Phoenix. Phoenix, Arizona. And as you know, this is where the Super Bowl is about to happen, Super y'all. Super Bowl 57. Super Bowl 57. The Chiefs, Chiefs and Eagles. The Eagles. That's right. So, you know, we actually came down here for a wedding. Mm-hmm. Um, but we've got to experience a lot of wonderful things. Um, but we haven't been to a wedding, babe, in in a while in a while i mean when we got married everybody was getting all our (laughs) friends were getting married yeah we all got married we had a couple weddings a few years ago um but we came to this wedding and it really reminded us of some things right it was like huh gosh uh, you know this 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 made me think about our marriage and Mm -hmm. you know we're coming up on 13 years Mm -hmm. so it, it, it kind of reminds you that, oh, wow, let me think about the things that are important to me in my marriage and what I, the, the beauty that I've experienced in this marriage, you know, and what we would want for that couple, the beauty for that couple, exactly. which would be different than ours, but also such a wonderful. Some things you can keep in mind, especially thing. when you're talking about people who are just getting married, have their whole lives ahead of them and are trying to do the right thing. You just want to wish them the best. There's some things I wish we knew. One of the reasons why we started this whole podcast in the first place was because when we were getting married and we were looking for other people who were in happy situations, mm-hmm. honestly, we were hard pressed to find them. Mm-hmm. So we decided that this show would be a way for us to kind of memorialize how to do this in a way that can actually lead to some level of happiness, mostly because We didn't have that example ourselves. So if we were going to talk to some newlyweds, we believe this is the five things that we would want them all to know. And you know what? We're even going to throw in a bonus one, but you'll have to wait till the end to get that bonus one. But for now, let's get going. You know, I think it's easy when you first get married to do a lot of the things we're going to talk about. But, you know, after you've been married, you know, five years, 10 years, (laughs) almost 13 years like we have, it's really important to keep some of these things in mind. So let's jump into number one. Let's go. The first one that we're going to talk about is marriage isn't always equal, mm. right? You always often hear people say, okay, it has to be 50-50, yep. um, but the truth is that, that that's not <laughs> reality. That's not real. First that's of all, real. you should be two whole people Absolutely. coming to your marriage, giving 100%. Absolutely. I'm giving my 100%. And I'm he's giving, giving my 100%. Correct. Nothing less. Nothing less. But we are human, right? Things happen. We go through different life experiences emotions feelings and sometimes it does weigh on your spouse it and does. so sometimes you're not going to be able to give everything all the time and some so sometimes i'm really good at you know 60 70 percent and he you know is not feeling his full self for not. whatever reason mm-hmm. and so that's when you know you have to jump in you know and say okay how can i be here for you how can i um support you what do you need and sometimes it's not always words but that comes with time that comes with time <laughs> we're going to talk about, we're gonna talk about oh, using your words in a minute, <laughs> in a minute. <laughs> um, but just know that it's not always equal and that's okay yes especially for men i know a lot of times we try to come at things i'm going to speak to the men who are trying their best to put their 100% all the time. If, if you're not on that tip, I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to you guys who are actually trying to be great husbands. And I believe that's everyone who's watching this video. One of the things that we do is we tend to just take it all on ourselves. And we're just gonna hold this rock. We're gonna put it on our back. We're gonna put the family on our back. We're gonna put the city on our back. We're gonna put the world on our back. And we're just gonna make a move. But that's antithetical to why God gave us wives in the first place. Hashtag help meet for a reason. (laughs) So so sometimes the best thing you can do is just woosah and allow your partner to do what it is they do because it's for your benefit. Mm -hmm. So yes, because of that, it ain't always equal. And sometimes you're gonna have to just take that L and go sleep, go rest, go to the gym, do what you gotta do, take care of yourself so that you can show up better for your partner and for your family absolutely all right number two teach your partner how to treat you 
so one. this is a big one because this is not something that you ever really stop doing and why you know I got you I always say it because you're learning and you're growing and you're progressing right and so it takes time you know to understand the things that you need and sometimes it could be your spouse does something and you're like wait hold on that didn't quite sit well in my spirit <laughs> you know and so that will happen guys it will happen it will happen and <laughs> you, you don't realize that okay i really don't like when you you do this for example um one thing that he would do is he would come home and he'd go straight to the basement i did do that yes and yes, i'm like that. okay I, I now I know he's coming home because I we can tell when the garage closes but even before we had that technology in our house right he would come home come straight to the basement and it'd be like 20 minutes before he'd come upstairs and I'd say to him I was like you know you don't I, I understand that you know you got stuff to do maybe you're finishing up a call or whatever but I could be upstairs dead and you would never know until 20 minutes later right <laughs> so at least shoot me a text at least come up and check on me in london at least say hey babe you know i appreciate it. you know because you never you just never know you know, and obviously he's not thinking bad things or negative things in that 90 percent of the time i was just completing work but for me just it just seems work. like okay you're in your own world it's true but you have a whole family upstairs that could need you the whole time let's be let's just keep it let's just keep it a buck i was in my own world I was in work mode. I was going downstairs to the studio. I was trying to send an email. I was trying to finish a mix. I was trying to do whatever I was trying to do. Coming in the house and not acknowledging anybody. It wasn't something I was trying to do on purpose. It was just something that was being done. Right. So I will say this, as far as treating your, uh, teaching your partner how to treat you, she didn't spaz on me. She didn't go, you're this, and now because you're you didn't do this, you're selfish, and you don't this, care, and you... It wasn't that. It we was, should be first, and it wasn't... It wasn't that. No. It was just hey this is something that i'm finding affects me help i need help with this yes i need your help with this specifically and i need you to do something about it and I, hopefully i did do something about you it you did all He's right so much better and like i said something even all now right. we'll be like hey babe i'm home you know um just running down for, to the basement real quick you good or something like that it yeah. doesn't have to be a full you know but the, it's it's interesting that you said that because our next one is actually use your words use your words right so you have to make this. sure that you can communicate what it is that you need they kind of go hand in hand but i think what is why while using your words sounds so simple the hard and difficult part sometimes about using your words is speaking in a way that your partner can hear it or receive mm. it Right. That's real. So if I go in there and I'm screaming, I'm like, you this and you're selfish, you don't care, blah, blah, blah. What's he gonna do? He's gonna shut down. Your partner might do something different. They might yeah. walk away or yeah. but he's gonna shut down. Yeah, I'm not I'm not he's gonna not, I'm not gonna fire back because not, I don't wanna be disrespectful, but I will shut down. You're not gonna hear down. from me for a while. So. And he's not gonna hear anything that I have to say. And sometimes you are in a place where you are upset and you're emotional and I, i've told you guys this before take some time say look babe i need a minute so i'm yep. gonna go over here now chances are he knows me he knows something's wrong mm -hmm. he probably knows it's him <laughs> maybe but we have to okay. get past that too we have to get past <laughs> that too but it's okay to say hey you know what i need a minute let me work through your thoughts try to figure out the root of what your issue is if your part that's like for instance one. if your spouse walks away you could be triggered by the fact that you know I'm sorry if this happened to any of you but that your parent walked away from you when you were a child and you're now realizing you know that's triggering for me I saw Lettucey talk about this once she was on uh, doing an interview with Black Love and she was sitting with her husband and she was saying you know they were having a fight this is before they were married and you know he walked away and she chased after him she was trying to get him back and yeah. she was trying to but yeah. she was mad at the same time and she got on the phone with her mom and just said, but mom, he's he's going to leave and he's not going to come back. And he turns around and says, do you think I'm not coming back? I'm right. coming back. I just right. need a minute. Triggering. And that for, she realized at that point, that was just a trigger for her. And they both realized it. Actually. Right. They both realized yes. it. And they were able to just calm everything back down because they found the root of the situation. Yeah. yeah. I think we need a whole podcast on this one, baby. Yeah, this one goes deep. This one goes deep. It's, it's really important 
to use your words, but it's also important to hear ah. the words of your spouse. Hear the words being used. You can't just say, oh yeah, he's just <clears throat> talking or she's just talking. No, you really have to listen. And that so, includes the underlying subtext. Yes. You're selfish could just mean, I feel scared. Right. And you got to know the difference and how to make that translation. Yeah. So we might we don't have to have a whole podcast that on that one circle back because that that goes really deep. Yeah. But, I think all so. right. Number four, <laughs> you're a team. Act like it. Here we are, in Phoenix, Arizona, where Super Bowl Fifty Seven is happening, and I find that this is one of the biggest lessons we can take away uh, right now, and that is we are a team. It's us versus everything else, and what we have to do is be in sync. Well, we can't make it to our Super Bowl. It sounds corny, y'all, but it's true. But it's true. They need each other to Facts. win that Super Bowl. Absolutely. One of Facts. them is not going to win them. It's win it by gonna, themselves. You, can, right? you can't have a quarterback throw to nobody. So if you want to win at your. <laughs> All right, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That was corny. Bad joke. That's actually Bad really joke. funny. <laughs> <laughs> it's, but if you want to win at your marriage, you really have to work as a team, right? Yeah. Sometimes the team has weak moments. Sometimes the team needs to stop and regroup, refocus. All of that is okay. But if the goal is to move like a team, act like a team, then that is really what's going to give you success at the end. And at the same time, you have to know as a team who you're playing against. Mm -hmm. I'm not playing against her. She's on my team. Mm -hmm. I'm not facing her and going, I got to get through you. I'm standing beside her and going, we got to get through that. <laughs> There's a difference between the two. And coming at your marriage from an adversarial perspective is not going to be the best. So know who you know, who the opponent is in life and y'all attack it like a team. Amen. Because you are. Yes. So act like it. Act like it. Number five. Number there five. There is no perfect marriage. None. Doesn't exist. No perfect. Doesn't you know, exist. don't look at us and think, oh my gosh, I just, they have it all together. And we, we are, we figured out something. So I'm not going to act like, you know, we fight every day and then we come and say, hey guys, <laughs> welcome to our podcast. <laughs> that is not, our marriage is beautiful. Mm -hmm. We've definitely worked to make it beautiful. Um, and so I want you to remember that there is no perfect marriage. None. None. Nobody's perfect. None. No marriage is perfect. Um, it takes a lot of work and effort and talking and listening and compromise and you know so i want you to remember that the goal here is not to make you like us the goal here is for to help you find the beauty in your marriage yeah in your relationship yes, that well said. and well whatever said. that looks like for you with the tools that we've learned that we're still learning mm -hmm. with things that you see here put it all together and really find that beauty in your marriage absolutely and not only is there no perfect marriage but at the same time it's not even about being perfect it's about being satisfying right now yes and how to set yourself up for a series of being satisfied right now because yeah. you got to live in the moment yeah but you have to set yourself up for the next moment so if we're not on in sync right now what are we going to do to be in sync in the next moment what am i actively doing what is she actively doing how are we actively coming together to make sure that that can happen that's right because there is no perfect marriage might as well make the best of it uh, there you go <laughs> so before we do anything else make sure you like this video make sure you leave a comment because we want you to join the conversation we really want to hear from you make sure you yeah. go down to our community tab and keep tabs on what we're doing because we we have polls and we ask questions there we really genuinely want to hear from you yes we want to know what it is that you believe is the best thing you can do for your marriage and what advice you would give to some brand new newlyweds who are on their way to making their best lives so wait i think we have one more right we have a bonus we one. have that bonus one and guess what y'all marriage is fun it is if you let it be if you let it be don't forget i think i think that was what i took away from being at a wedding this weekend was that you look at the couple and you're like wow they really like each other yeah you know and so I think as the years go by, you know, you lose that because things happen. You know, you, you buy a house and you can have kids and, you know, there's so much responsibility. Um, but you have to really remember to have fun with each other, just yeah. like you did when you got, ma <laughs> when you got married. Um, it's important. 
it's, it's important. important. It's it's important, obviously, to go on dates. Stay up late and have a drink. We've done charcuterie boards in our room with wine. We it's just nice. turn the TV and we just watch a comedy that we've seen five thousand times. And honestly, those those dates are fire. It was just, <laughs> yeah, those are the best ones. Those are the best ones. Um, <laughs> laugh together, tell bad jokes, sit and people laugh watch. at each other's jokes and say, "Oh, that was real corny." But I got dad jokes for days. Right. Bro. That you know, but that was the first time I've laughed all day. You know, remember to have. I think that was the biggest takeaway for me. Yeah, going to a wedding, you know, is remembering that that fun that you had on that day, on your wedding day, and after and before. Remember to have that even almost thirteen years later. Absolutely. So. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe on this video. Share with all your couples, and especially with those newlywed couples who are married three, five years and under. Um, we want to make sure that we build and join this community. Thank you so much for making building so this much. community the way we have. We're almost at three thousand uh, uh, subscribers, yes. and we just thank you sincerely guys so appreciate much. it. We're so we are grateful genuinely to you. just trying to build this community so that we can, especially in the black and brown communities, make sure that we have nice, strong solidly built marriages so we can have amazingly strong solidly built families hold on babe we got to get into more pre super bowl stuff y'all so we're gonna leave it here all right <laughs> okay. we gotta go there's stuff we gotta to go do, there's babe. stuff to do there's stuff to do <laughs> remember we're better together, together. So let's, let's go, go eagles, eagles.